All dressed up. Nowhere to go. It's time for reaction. Hey everybody, my name is Old School Nerd, and um, we're back again with Deer Stalker Pictures uh, One for All D and D Comedy Web Series. Um, our three plucky adventures. I keep calling them plucky, only because you can tell that uh, two of the members do their eyebrows well. One of them still needs help. Yes, I'm talking to you, Thomas. Okay, so I said that before I did another reaction that I would cosplay for it, and I am. I'm cosplaying right now. Uh, my cosplay is actually a Cajun reactor in South Louisiana reacting to videos from Australia. But I'm missing one vital piece, and I've been waiting for it to come in so I could finish my look. Okay? Came in the mail yesterday. Um, the return address is, um, wow, Auckland. I don't even know where that's at. Auckland. Um, that ain't from around here. And I tell you right now, somebody in the comments goes, uh, Auckland is the capital of New Zealand. No shit, bro. Okay, so let me open this bag up and see what's in here. Um, I mean, it, it could be something from Bungie. No. It could be something from my mom. No. <laughs> she doesn't live in Auckland. But it actually is... Yay, look, it's my otherworldly pen. Yeah. Yep, this is my otherworldly pen for, uh, for my Patreon. Uh-huh, put that on there, just like that. All right, good deal. See, now the look is complete. Now I have what I needed. All right, okay, so now, got my otherworldly pin on, and it says, thank you. Um, uh, the lighting's bad facing this way. So uh, thank you so much for your order. Really appreciate your support. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, it's from their uh, supplier, their collab supplier, which does all their, um, um, Lab does all their uh, merchandise, their shirts, their pins, and all that stuff. So that it's really cool. Um, yeah. So I have my otherworldly patron pin. So I'm good. Ready to do the next reaction. My cosplay character is a Cajun reactor from South Louisiana in the United States, reacting to Australian people doing D and D spoof comedy. It's it's fairly niche, but hey, I think I could pull it off. Let's go. It's really big. Not that I mind. How much farther? <laughs> We've been walking for hours and my, my feet are hurting and I'm pretty sore and sunburned. <laughs> Look how pink I am. Well, if you hadn't ever run off into the forest and gotten us all lost, we'd probably be there by now. It's not my fault. I thought the squirrel had a bag of gold. It turns out that it was copper gold. She chased to get your eyes checked. She chased a squirrel that she thought had a bag of gold. I think Eva's gonna strangle her in her sleep. <laughs> I have minus one's perception, so guys, please. I need my beauty sleep. Fine. We'll make camp. Is there anywhere nearby that's hidden that we can set up camp? Make a perception check. You see a clearing in the forest ahead of you. And as far as you can tell, it looks completely safe. Mm 
Evandra, what do you hope I see? I see. Kindle is such a dork, but he's great at what he does. Also, it's true. <clears throat> For some reason, instead of someone with high wisdom, like, oh, I don't know, a druid or maybe a cleric saying, hey, is this a good place to make camp? No, no. It's always the fighter or the sorcerer or someone who has like no wisdom. By the way, perception checks, your, how you perceive things around you and insight are wisdom based skills. So you always have these, all their ability points on strength and constitution or dexterity making these perception checks. And their bonuses are like negative one or zero and they'll roll a five and they have no idea that, well, like Nixie said, her, her, her perception is negative one, which means for those who don't know how this works is if you go someplace and you're like, Hey, is, do I see anything in this room? Is it, does it look safe? Your dungeon master will say, roll a perception check. And your perception is like, how you perceive things or insight is do you like you know so those are two wisdom skills good wisdom decision making skills you'd be surprised how many people that are not druids and not clerics don't put any points in wisdom and then whenever they're asked these questions they're always thinking that i need to have super high skills so when i say i attack that that's what they need what they don't realize is if you don't have wisdom you can make some pretty crappy decisions I don't think Eva's the kind of person that would need to get this close to a creeper to know that she's in a she's in a problem situation. Trees, bushes. I see a forest. Looks like we're in a forest. Let's camp here. Keep an eye out there. Heard about these woods. They say it's full of bandits. Really hate to piss them off. Oh. What the fuck, Richard? <laughs> I hear there are bandits in these woods. I would really hate to piss them off. I don't think I've ever seen a more literal circumstance. Wait, technically, this is pissing on. Continue. Matt, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we do run into them so we can burn them. And then I won't have to go looking for kindling. We're gonna set up camp here. Who's taking first watch? All right, guys, I'm going to bed now. Good night, bye. No, you can't get out of it this time. Come on. Fine. I'll go first watch. As you go to take first watch, you are too distracted with complaining about how much you don't like Avandra. Nya, 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 nya. I'm Avandra, and I'm the leader, so where did they go? Well, how about this? You like a fireball? <laughs> There's a sound in the forest. And nothing happens. Second watch. I've got this. It's later on in the night. Moonlight shines through the trees, illuminating the clearing around you. <gasps> you think you can see a shadow moving off to the side. And... It's that squirrel from before. Final watch. Sure. Good job, squirrel. As you go for the final watch of the night, you're feeling very sleepy. Long, long time. All you had to do was stay awake. Wanna lay my head. And you fall asleep. Nice. <laughs> Good job. And when you wake up in the morning, 
all of your worldly possessions are gone. Nice. Who stole my earrings? What the hell, man? I don't know why you're looking at me. I, I, I don't even have dark vision. Why don't you let me keep watch? Do we at least see where they went? Make a perception check. Oh, jeez. Yeah, we really hit the jackpot this time, fellas. Look at me. I'm a fighter. <laughs> the most vanilla class in all the fantasy games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not as bad as me. Look, I'm a slutty pirate. <laughs> Walk the plank, scaly wags. <laughs> oh, he's a... Uh... Not as great as he says he is. Nice! Beautiful! Alright, you listen here, you filthy meatbags. Like and subscribe to Deer Stalker, or we are gonna come rob you just as well. Um, uh, and you <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> 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 Nice. Smash that bell icon, for I come to your house and smash your little face. And you better believe that our Patreon supporters are going to be the only ones showing any leniency when I get round and... I, I've had a lot. Like and subscribe, or I'll f***ing kill you. Wow. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> okay, so these are some of the things that you notice um, in the first episodes, okay? Um, most of their budget is on the costuming and, um, they do a really good job working with what they have. For instance, okay. Gotta love the green screen, triple Kindles. Uh, <laughs> just, um, yeah. So obviously green screen, it, 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 they do what they gotta do. Um, one thing that people don't realize, and I think this is kind of interesting. Okay. They're not shooting at night here. Uh, one of the classic uh, examples of filmmaking is um, shooting at night is extremely expensive. Uh, to properly light film, to record at night is extremely expensive. And it's really hard to do if you're actually in the forest. Um, so even uh, unless it's a Hollywood production, like a major budget production, or... And in most cases, most TV shows do not film at night. And if they do, they usually do it in a city where they can grab natural city street lights and just kind of work elongated shots and, and really find it out. So in the beginning, um, if they want to do a night scene, they'll do it like this. And what this is a classic Hollywood trick. It's a classic filmmaking trick. OK, we look at Nixie right here. Um, this is not obviously not nighttime. OK, you can see the sun on her hands in her hair, casting shadows on her, on her. Now, some people say like, okay, well, they shot the moon, so it could be moonlight. Uh, well, true, but the problem is, is when you make films like this, um, I've, I've been some nights in the forest where the moon is full, and you could almost get to this level of light from the moonlight. However, cameras don't, really work the same way that our eyes do and really can't capture that well. So what they do is it's a classic trick. They will actually use what's referred to as a night light filter. It's a night filter that goes on the camera and you can actually shoot during the day. And this could be any time during the morning or afternoon, depending upon where the sun is. And they can actually shoot all of these shots here during the day, but it looks like it's night. And it's a lot cheaper to shoot because the sun is a lot easier to manipulate than artificial lighting. Um, and yeah, so there you go. All right, so this was, uh, <laughs> this was possibly the worst perception check rolls in the history of D&D. &D. And we got to see all of it. Uh, wow. All right, so super happy I got my uh, Patreon pin in. Super excited for that. Thank you all for coming in. My name is Old School Nerd, and this was uh, this was Dillard Stalker Pictures, One for All Perception Check. This was, of course, Season 1, Episode 3.
Well, on to number four. 